in-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place. I'm Bill Drees, reporter for The Daily Memphian. We are talking with Doug McAllen, Chief Operating Officer of the City of Memphis, and this is On the Record. We record this Monday, July 11th, 2022. As we reported last week, the city, through the Memphis River Parks Partnership, is looking again at some type of long-range plan for a Mud Island River Park, the city-owned park that is about the southern half of Mud Island. By the way, Mud Island River Park turned 40 years old earlier this month. Um, Doug, as I understand this, the city wants four scenarios for the long-term future of Mud Island. Tell me how this works. Well, thanks, Bill. Glad to join you today. Obviously, Mud Island has been um, in the news periodically over at least the last six and a half years since we've been here and have had this role. I know early on, there was some real interest in Mud Island from some private development there. Uh, quite frankly, at that time, uh, there were some other priorities we were trying to address. We didn't have quite as robust a plan for the riverfront. We certainly didn't have the kinds of investment we were seeking on the riverfront, but, but that's all changed. Uh, we've been able through Accelerate Memphis to advance the Memphis 3.0 plan. We now have funding for Transit Vision, seeing substantial investment at Tom Lee Park, and now also some funding for the Harbor Docks project. So the logical question is, now what about Mud Island? Are we prepared for that now? And I think that it's reasonable to say that this is the time now where we should start thinking about that next big asset on the river, which is Mud Island. So um, recently, as you said, Bill, uh, there was uh, a request by city council. Uh, There was $5.5 million in the recent budget applied for Mud Island for improvements there. And rather than being specific about what those improvements were going to be, Memphis River Parks Partnership was asked and given some money, I think $75,000 of grant funding to do uh, a study, not about exactly what amenities should be there, but what kind of sustainable investments we should make as a predicate for spending that five and a half million dollars. So. As you know, through Accelerate Memphis, the city had already put in about $4 million as a a baseline investment just to make sure the restrooms work, the escalators and elevators were working, and to make sure the essential utilities uh, were maintained and to fix some of the broken structure. That is a very baseline investment just to make sure we didn't have any further decay of the island. When city council debated uh, the additional five and a half million dollars, there were discussion about everything from the monorail to putting money into the amphitheater. And so I think city council wisely said we should um, look and see what the long term prognosis is for any kind of development on Mud Island. And so uh, I think what will be examined and I don't have all of the details of how they will do that, but what is proposed is for a consultant Uh, to look at uh, the island, to understand the riverfront plan, to understand the other investments that are happening along the river, and some of the ideas that are proposed and say, uh, in general, here are the kinds of things that we see could be sustainable and compatible on the island that uh, now your five and a half million dollars would help to catalyze and would be money well spent. I think that's the idea. Now, Uh, There are current initiatives underway, which we are very encouraged by. Uh, We are seeing more and more people coming over to Mud Island, more people uh, spending time there. There has been investments in everything from the Memphis sign to uh, some improvements to make sure that the river model works to now they're undergoing a North Gate renovation. There are also some other proposals from private developers to help bring some amenities that will bring activities to Mud Island, which we hope are also compatible with any potential use. And we don't want to slow any of that down, Uh, but we do want to make sure that while we're executing the $4 million that we know where that next five and a half million dollars is best placed so that we're not putting money where it's not helpful for longer term investments. Right, and and I think one thing that had been talked about for the use of, of the first 4 million of this approximately $9 million was specifically toward, toward getting some kind of modernization of, of the amphitheater. 
there. Sure. And I think that's something that everybody shares. Originally, the vision was that it could all go to the amphitheater uh, through some practical discussions. It was determined that, well, if the escalators and the elevators aren't working, if the bathrooms aren't working, and if the, you know, if the restaurant cafe is not working over there, it does little to invest in the amphitheater if you don't have the basic hotel amenities of you know, restrooms and working elevators. So the decision was made to prioritize those things uh, first so that you could get people to the island. And then with whatever uh, resources were left, let's do what we can to bring uh, the Mud Island Amphitheater up to modern standards. That is likely a much uh, taller order than just a few million dollars. Uh, it, as you say, it has been there for 40 years, uh, modern, you know, even you know, sports teams are updating their stadiums every seems like 15 or 20 years. Uh, music venues are becoming more, uh, you know, in the realm of being updated more frequently. We haven't really done much over there for 40 years to the amphitheater, so probably going to need a little heavier lift there. Uh, it's something I think that many people talk about as we have this wonderful music venue sitting across the street that's underused. And I think that is one of the pieces of excitement that people have from a private investment perspective is they look at that as a real opportunity. Uh, we do too, from a tourism, from a visitor perspective, and just bringing more activity down to Mud Island. Mm -hmm. um, you made reference to this when, when Mayor Strickland first took office in 2016, uh, the city underwent uh, a process of basically taking proposals. And uh, you got, a, I think, a couple of hotels were in the group of five. You had some uh, group uh, who operates out of Branson, Missouri, who just wanted to do the amphitheater. You had someone who had a, a set of attractions like you might find at a at a fair or or in an amusement park of uh, of some kind. Um, th this looks like it it might. Uh, well, well, you you also had an outdoor recreation area proposed as well to to round out the five proposals that that you had. W will this revisit any of those in search of of a a, a longer term philosophy, if you will, for, for for what you want out of the park? Well, I think that's right, uh, Bill. I think the philosophy is the right word here because I think rather than looking at any specific proposal that has either come before or proposing yet another use. I think it's really a philosophy about what's the best mix of uses that are out there. And um, that's what we hope to get out of that. Now, there's a number of specific proposals that can fit there. So we're hopeful that folks who have chosen to make an investment here in the near term with some of the things that are on the table for consideration today will be able to move forward because there are some activations happening over there. Uh, even as uh, we speak, I think there's some restaurateurs who have proposed to move into one of the spaces. There's some folks with some other uh, attractions, some adventure style attractions that are uh, very far along in their development. And we wanna see those move forward. But the philosophy of what fits and what is more sustainable in the long term and can be you know, resilient to the ups and downs, I think is, is what we're really trying to get out of this rather than any specific proposal. But uh, you're right, the times are different. Um, the, at that time, I believe the uh, proposal was that uh, the ideas could come forward, but there wouldn't be any significant investment of city resources. Clearly, that has changed. Accelerate Memphis has changed our mind. That is a what we view as a citywide asset. And I think we've made that change because we have seen progress on so many other things in our city that the question was really at that time, is that really the first thing that we should invest in? was Mud Island. Sure, it's an asset, but aren't there other things? And I think we made a decision at that time to prioritize some other investments. But now that those things are moving, it certainly is worthwhile examining what we can do with that next wonderful citywide asset. And that's where we are, why we are where we are today. Clearly a very different day when we have nine and a half million dollars of city money being proposed for Mud Island when just in 2016, we did not have anything like that uh, being proposed there. Right. Um, the expansion of the boat docks is not only an expansion of Beale Street Landing, it's also uh, improving, actually closer to just remaking the one boot, boat ramp that is there on the Mississippi River side of the park at Greenbelt Park. Um, there has been some talk about, about whether Greenbelt Park should be part of the River Park 
experience is sure. might we might we see a, a kind of a blurring of that boundary um uh, well, I think that might be a little too soon to tell. I mean, we have a lot of real estate over there. And I think um, the interesting, at least my observation is there's a heck of a lot of folks that use Greenbelt Park today for recreation, for passive kinds of interests, walkers, runners, families, sunset seekers, you know, people who are just picnicking over there. Uh, you mentioned the investment there at the Greenbelt Park. Uh, I hesitate to call it a boat ramp because that's really all it is today yeah. is asphalt going into the river. But you know, I believe we actually had riverboats tying off to tree stumps. Um, the riverboat industry is maturing to the point where we know that uh, at least one of the companies has told us by 2026, they'll have a, a boat in Memphis every day of the year. Uh, and we have three riverboat companies. So we know that we need to expand our uh, capacity here because there will be many days when we have multiple boats in Memphis, which is good for our economy, good for visitorship. Uh, so expanding the, the docking facility at Greenbelt Park and making it a formal, uh, like you're supposed to dock there facility is gonna be important for the visitor experience. And I think it's also important for the folks who live there and the Memphis natives who, who uh, actually take advantage of the recreational aspects that we have in Greenbelt Park to formalize that interaction of the river boats uh, with Greenbelt Park. I think you're right to ask, will, what will that interaction look like as we begin to put development over there? I think we always view that as a passive green space along the river. It's one of the best unspoiled areas on the river that you can actually see and enjoy the river. Uh, we'll focus on the southern end, as you said, with Mud Island, which is a, a much more uh, recreational style development there. But we'll see what comes from the uh, study. Okay. Does the city uh, foresee at this point a, a private entity running the park for the city that would take it out of the River Parks Partnership? Well, I think we haven't uh, eliminated anything as a as a uh, as a possibility at this point. I think we ought to examine all of those opportunities. You know, should that should that be proposed uh, by folks who are well informed, uh, ostensibly the consultant, then that's certainly something we should consider. If it's in the financial best interest of the city, if it uh, allows us to increase the uh, the opportunities for programming of other parks under MRPP's control, then certainly something worth considering. Okay. Um, and and I think in, in the interim between now and 2016, there was also some, some talk of an aquarium there and possibly a, uh, sure. a, a freshwater institute with the University of Memphis. And from what I can gather, the, the, the aquarium needed to have and probably still does need to have some measure of private investment. And it just didn't, to, to, to my view, really ever get off the ground in that aspect. Sure. Uh, that was a that was a vision that came together with a few with some thoughtful folks and I, you know, a lot of that was predicated on uh, an initial um, proposal for an aquarium that really would have required very little public money. Um, that ended up not being feasible, <laughs> and then the idea of the aquarium, you know, at that time we were focusing very heavily on the aquifer. And so the idea at the time was a proposed freshwater aquarium, potentially a small saltwater portion too, but you know, that would have been the catalyst for the Freshwater Institute. You would have had two things, an ecosystem and the aquifer to study together. Uh, I really don't think uh, you know, they were kind of symbiotic. You needed really both to make it work. And when the aquarium uh, was determined to not be economically feasible without a pretty massive uh, public subsidy, uh, then I think that uh, died uh, on the vine at that point. Certainly still a good idea for us to have a center of excellence here for fresh water since you know, more than 50% of North America's watershed drains right past Memphis. Um, right. So certainly a great idea. And uh, it's a time that maybe isn't right now, but might still come in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, a final point. Um, does this have a four month timetable? Is that when you're looking at getting getting some results back? From I would hope that we can accelerate that. I think that was the outside window that was given, but certainly um, we're hopeful that we can get to resolution before that. We'd like to get uh, the funding deployed in the best, you know, 
the longer we hold on to the money and don't make improvements, uh, that's less opportunity people have to enjoy the benefit of, the, of an improved park. It also, you know, if it, if if that study interferes with things that are that people are currently contemplating that are on the table, you know, it kind of puts a halt on uh, their progress and ability to move forward. So we would hope that this, you know, study would a do no harm and b uh, prepare us for investments in the future. And so I'm hopeful that we can get uh, something meaningful before that deadline, uh, so we can we can move on. And and you, and you certainly have have a lot of different ideas that that have been explored over over the years. So it's not like you're reinventing the wheel with this. No, that's right. There's a there's a heck of a lot. I've been a part of a lot of different proposals um, that have you know spanned I think the entire spectrum that you've talked about, Bill. So um, it's going to be interesting to see um, you know if the if the consultants you know, if any one of those is determined to be not included in that realm of good ideas or possibilities, um, I'll just be interested to see how all of those fare in the uh, analysis. All right. We've been talking about Mud Island River Park with the city's chief operating officer, Doug McCallan. I'm Bill Drees, and this has been On the Record.